What's up guys, this is Steve for Android at Night and today I'm going to be showing you 10 tips you can do to make your phone run faster. We're going to start with the very bare basics, the stuff that you can do with any Android phone, you don't need to be rooted or anything special and we're going to move through to some of the slightly more complicated bits and pieces towards the end of the video. So first on this list is increasing the speed of your animations. To do this you want to go to your settings menu, you want to tap on about phone you want to scroll down to the bottom again and you want to tap on your build number seven times. This will unlock the developer option in your settings menu. You then want to go into your dev options and scroll down to where it says animations. By default, these will all be set to one. Just to show you what happens if you set one to say 10 and then you can see the animation at the bottom just goes really, really slowly. So the lower these numbers are, the quicker your phone is going to switch in between individual apps. When all these animations are turned off, everything will run ever so slightly quicker. So apps and stuff like that will just be lightning, lightning fast. And if you want to make your phone feel even quicker, you can go ahead and just turn the animations off completely. Next up, we have speeding up the animations on your home screen. For this, you need to go to the link in the description and grab yourself a copy of Nova Launcher. You then want to long press on your home screen, go into the settings. You then need to choose the option look and feel and under animation speed, you want to set it to faster than light. This will make everything feel incredibly snappy, opening apps, just, just like that. Next up on this list is RAM cleaners and this might not be going in exactly the direction you're expecting. RAM cleaners are actually really detrimental to the way that Android handles RAM. RAM is your random access memory and it's what applications use to actually pull and store data. The main issue with RAM cleaners is that they work on the presumption that having more free RAM is better and that just closing apps will actually free up RAM for your phone. Um, having more free RAM is kind of true. If you can get a phone with actually more physical RAM, obviously that's going to be quicker and you can multitask a little bit more efficiently. But the idea that you can just use a RAM cleaner to just kill applications and free up RAM and speed your phone up just doesn't work. The way Android handles RAM is it needs stuff to be constantly loaded in it for it to work efficiently. All you're doing with a RAM cleaner is killing a task and forcing it to reopen. Android doesn't multitask like iOS, it has everything constantly loaded in the background and that's why multitasking is so good on Android, but using a RAM cleaner is not going to help it one bit. All this being said, there are a few things you can do to speed up your phone which do involve your RAM. The first is going into your settings and identifying the apps that are really, really hammering your RAM and either uninstalling them or freezing them. Freezing is different to just killing an application and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video. But for now, you want to go back to your developer options. You want to scroll down to where it says running services. You want to go into that and you'll get a full breakdown of how much RAM every single app on your phone is currently using. So I don't actually have Facebook installed anymore because it's an absolute RAM hog. But if you do have Facebook installed, you'll be able to see that it's using a huge amount of memory in the background pretty much all the time. So if your phone is running slowly, you can go in, see what's actually using up all the RAM, and then you can either hibernate that app or get rid of it. Next up is just making sure that your device isn't crammed with photos and pictures and things that you don't actually need saved to your device. The best app for this is Google Photos. Just install this on your device and all your photos and videos will be automatically backed up to the cloud whenever you're on a Wi-Fi network. If you do start to run out of space on your phone, you can just open up the Photos app, open up the sidebar, and under the bin here, there is an option which says free up space. This will get rid of any files that are still on your device but have already been backed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit remove. This means you're not actually losing any photos, any videos, all those memories are still safe in the cloud and you can still view them on your phone through the Google Photo app. It just means they are not on the device taking up memory on your SD card. And, and as you guys will probably have experienced, if your phone gets to that point where there's only sort of 15 megabytes, 20 megabytes left of free space, it will really, really start to chug. It also means you can't install anything else. So if you have got an issue with your SD card being clogged, this is a really easy way to free up some extra space. In a very similar vein, is just going into your apps and seeing if there's things you don't use. It's really nice to have loads of apps on your phone. You never know when you're going to need them. But in all honesty, a lot of the time you don't need as many as you have. It seems really simple and obvious, and it's one of the reasons that phones straight out of the box tend to run very, very quickly. 
Certain apps become malicious and won't let you uninstall them. The easy way to fix this is to simply boot your phone into safe mode and uninstall them that way. What you need to do is long press power off from your power options menu. This will then give you the option to reboot into safe mode. This is great for getting rid of, as I said, malicious apps, anything with a virus in it, or anything that just won't let you uninstall it. As I mentioned earlier, getting rid of apps using a RAM cleaner won't speed your phone up. What you can do, however, is hibernate them. And the easiest way to hibernate an app is using Greenify. If you are rooted, this is gonna have some extra powerful functionality, but this will also work if you are unrooted as my Nexus 6P currently is. What this lets you do is go and choose which applications you want to hibernate. What this means is unless you open them, they won't be able to run any processes. This means they won't be accessing the data network and they won't be using up RAM when you're not using them. Obviously, one thing to bear in mind with this is certain social apps you will want to keep unhibernated because otherwise you won't get push notifications. However, I, for example, don't need push notifications from Instagram. There's nothing going on on Instagram that is that, um, that urgent, so I have it set so that Instagram will hibernate. You can then go into the app and simply hit hibernate and all these apps will automatically start hibernating. This will save you a huge amount of battery life and it will also increase the speed of your phone. If you want to choose an app to add to this list, you can hit the little plus button at the bottom and you'll get a full list of your applications. You then simply choose any ones that you want to hibernate. So for example, you can see I have got a lot of lock screen apps installed at the moment because I'm going to be doing a video on that in the very near future. But at the moment, I'm not actually using them, I'm just keeping them on my device so they're there when I need to do the review. So I'm going to add all of these to my hibernation list. You then want to tap on the apps that you have selected and hit the little Z button at the bottom and you can force them to go into hibernation. Next up, we have clearing the caches of your apps. If you run a lot of applications, caches are just going to be files, images, those sorts of things, which will be stored on your SD card for later use. Often, if you uninstall an app, a cache file might still remain and a lot of apps are actually very inefficient um, in the way that and a lot of apps are quite inefficient in the way they handle their caches. So if you want to actually clear this out, you can do this app by app. So for example, I'm just gonna go into AirDroid, I'm gonna hit storage, and then I'm gonna hit clear cache. This is a feature that a lot of apps claim to do for you, but you really don't need another app. All you're doing by introducing another app into the whole system is overcomplicating it and using up more RAM. So if your phone is very slow and struggling, actually installing something which you claim to get rid of all the cache files for you um, could actually be slowing your phone down. You can just really easily do it manually. Whilst it's not good to keep killing apps to free up more RAM on your phone, obviously having more RAM is gonna speed your phone up. There's a cool thing you can do on Android, which means you can increase the RAM of your phone without sort of taking the back off and getting a soldering iron out and doing any kind of hardware modding. You can actually run um, your SD card or your internal SD card as RAM. This is called virtual RAM and it's actually pretty easy to set up. One caveat with this is that a lot of phones need to be routed for this to work. You need a specific kernel which allows the kind of SD card swapping. Before you actually buy the app and see if it does work on your phone, you can go to the other link in the description and download the memory info and swap file check app. This will just check to see whether your kernel will support this kind of swapping. If your kernel is supported, you just need to download Rosoft RAM Expander. You then choose which drive on your storage you are going to use for the virtual RAM. Depending on your phone, you can get up to a gig or a gig and a half of extra RAM using this, and this will actually increase your phone's speed. You'll be able to multitask a little bit better. You'll be able to run more widgets, more live wallpapers, and all that good stuff. Currently, my Nexus 6P and my Nexus 5 don't have kernels that support this. I am gonna be doing a video in the very near future showing it running on an LG G3, but for now, um, if you want to check them out, the links are in the description. And finally, on this list, we have routing and overclocking your phone. Now, if you do root your phone, there are a bunch of other things you can do to speed it up. You can install custom kernels and custom ROMs, but my personal favorite way of making your phone faster is to use an exposed module, and the exposed module is called Performance Profile. This will let you set your CPU um, specifically for different apps. So for example, for games, I have it set that this will really, really overclock the CPU, and it'll make the whole experience a lot smoother and a lot quicker. The reason I prefer doing this to installing a custom kernel or anything like that is it's just a little bit more simple. You can literally just go to the link in the description and download this exposed module. If you don't know how to install exposed, I'll put a link in the description to my exposed installation video. And if you don't need to root your phone, I will put some links in the description as well. I am also gonna be doing a video on one-click routing your phone again with, a, um, with an LG G3, so that'll be coming in the next week or two. So subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. 
And that is my top 10 list of ways to speed up your Android phone. Let me know in the comments what your favorite tips are, if you've tried out any of these and if they worked really well. I again apologize for my voice. I am kind of ill. I feel kind of fluey and horrible, but I have dragged myself out of bed to film this for you guys. But please do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. As always, you can follow me on my social media things, the links in the description, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.